Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adult Chair on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and I am thrilled as ever to be here with Michelle Chalfont. Hello, Pete Wright. Hello, Michelle Chalfont. How are you feeling? <laughs> Are you feeling deeply today? I'm feeling really deep. But you know what? I'm always feeling deeply. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, <laughs> but I am. <laughs> well, that is where we're, that's actually uh, what we're going to talk about today. And I'm very excited to hear how you are going to frame this conversation and where it came from. Uh, but before we dig in, uh, don't forget, everybody, we need you to do this. Head over to theadultchair.com to learn more about the show and subscribe for free to this mailing list. And I'll tell you why I'm excited about it. We're changing up the mailing list. And uh, we're, we are going to be uh, publishing some wonderful news new things to this mailing list that you will only be able to get as a subscriber of the mailing list. It won't be on the blog. It won't be in the podcast feed. Great new resources from contributors that have crossed our path on this podcast. Uh, we've got recipes. We've got new meditations. We've got all sorts of great stuff that that is going to start hitting the mailing list this month. So uh, as you are uh, listening to this show, just head over to uh, theadultchair.com and subscribe to the mailing list. Uh, make sure you don't miss any of this good stuff. I'm so excited about our new newsletter. I know. I am <laughs> so excited me. about that too. I, like, I didn't want to. I'm listening. I, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, this isn't in my notes. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> like new. Yeah, I know. I'm. I am very excited about our new newsletter, though. I have to say, it's jam packed full of information. Yes, people need to. How do they get? How do they do that? Just go to the website, Pete. Well, yeah, you just go to the website, and there's a blue button to sign up and and add your name to the email address. So it's, it's your email address to the mailing list, and it so it's super easy. Uh, and and no, we're not going to send emails to you every single day. We're not going to spam you. It's just pr- a couple of times a month. Uh, you will get uh, new information, new podcast uh, uh, episodes, but great new articles that you won't be able to find anywhere else. That's the important part. Uh, so yes. uh, join the mailing list. There you go. All right. All right. So now we're talking about feeling deeply. This is, uh, you started this by posing the question, am I an empath? Well, yes. I think we need to start by talking about what is an empath? So an empath is somebody that feels really, really deeply what other people are feeling. Okay. In a nutshell, that is yeah. what an empath is. Well, and so um, that's what an empath is. And we are not all empaths, right? Some people are more, no. more sort of empathetic than others, sort of right. magnetic to that. And so then what are the implications of living as an empath? empath? I think that's, you know, that really gets to the nut of, of where we want to go with this conversation. How do you live as an empath? You might get labeled like as being someone that's very emotional um, mm-hmm. or someone that is just a crier. Oftentimes, again, it gets masked for anxiety or depression, because we're feeling, mm-hmm. and it's not only feeling like what's going on with, with the other person that is in front of you, but if you're in a room full of people, you start reading everybody's feelings and everybody's emotions, and they literally get absorbed into our own energy field. Right. So it, it it amps us up. It's like, bah! you know, it can make us feel anxiety. Um, however, if I'm, if I'm also with someone that's very sad, I can pick up on their emotion, and then suddenly I leave that meeting, and then I feel really sad too. So all of a sudden we feel like, gosh, you know, am I depressed? What's wrong with me? Yeah. When really all that we did was... We just felt the person that we were talking to. But here's a side note to all of this. People can take what I call energetic dumps in our energy field. <laughs> this so let's is go really, ahead and really, explain. Really cool. We need to explain what that is before you let my imagination run away with itself. Yes. <laughs> and you can imagine what that looks like, but it's true. So we can be in line. At, I always say, you know, like at the grocery store or at the mall or wherever you are. Are. And let's say that you're standing in line at, at, at the grocery store and you've got someone in front of you that their dog just died or they went through a divorce or whatever. They're in some sort of very deep, sad or grieving place. And you're not even talking to that person, but you're just in line. And then you go through the line and then you leave the store and you're driving home and you go, God, that just happened. Yeah. I feel terrible. Like I'm, I'm exhausted. Even we might even feel physical symptoms of that person. So you might even feel like suddenly achy. And then we second guess and go, gosh, am I coming out of the flu? What's wrong with me? Maybe I'm depressed. So we start thinking we have, you know, something wrong with us when in reality, that person dumped their energy straight into our energy field and then we start feeling it. 
So that's what an energetic dump that, is. You know, that is so interesting. Okay, so I taking just a bit of a step back. I uh, Example. It's example time. I, I think love- I am an empath. I don't think I, I think I may be a situational empath. Is that, is that such a thing? I uh, I was away for the weekend, and uh, I so my wife and my kids were home uh, without me, and you know in mourning obviously because they miss me so much when I'm gone. Um, anyhow, I knew that it was going to be a hard weekend for my family. I knew that both of my kids had a lot of homework, and they were stressed about it, and they didn't they they didn't quite know what direction it was going to be. And I know that that stress sort of you know it amplifies in the house. And I knew my wife was going to be frustrated with some things. And and that and and as I was driving home uh, yesterday afternoon, I thought to myself, Oh my goodness, I have to be ready for this because I don't know what I'm going to be walking into, but it could be. Uh, a challenge. And thinking about uh, us doing this show today, uh, I was trying to sort of, you know, gird my foundation, right, to to be strong. And it is incredibly challenging for me to do that. I walked into the house. In fact, I got off the highway, uh, you know, a half a mile from my house, and it started pouring rain. So, you oh, know, wow. t- <laughs> correlations, not causation, but it was dumping rain. I thought, well, that's a sign. So I, I pull up to the house and I walk in and it was exactly what I had predicted it to be. Everybody was pretty stressed out and my wife was upset with the kids and they were really struggling. And I immediately felt like I weighed about 800 pounds, right? Every, mm. the, the air got heavy around me. It was this just leaden brick on my shoulders. And I was frustrated. And immediately I became sort of snappy. And, and I mean, I sucked it in and I became that thing. I was that emotional chameleon, right? Right. I don't do that all the time. Like you're describing experience of crowds. I can be just my sort of introversion can lead me to be, uh, mm-hmm. to you know, heaviness in in. In crowds, I, I don't like them all that much, so you know I prefer smaller venues. But uh, I don't take on other individuals. But people who are close to me, boy, I can be really impacted. I have gotten to the point where I've had to warn her, you know, <laughs> like not warn her, but just yeah. tell her, you know, apologize. Like I'm, I'm sorry. It seems like I'm snappy, and I can't be somebody for you to lean on. That that I think is the biggest challenge for us because sometimes when she's upset, she needs to be able to lean on me and count on me for support. And yet right. I am being dragged down by her state rather than buoying her up. That is a really difficult pattern to get out of. Well, I need to talk to you about the adult chair, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> you see how I set you up? That's like a home Thank run you. opportunity that was, right that there. That was yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that was yeah. a home run. Yeah. Because when I've, I've had to learn the same exact thing with Graham and I, same exact thing. You know, he has, he has had, I should say in the past, quote unquote, Sunday stress. What is that? That's like, that's like getting ready for Monday and it stresses you out not knowing what you... And so Sunday would be hell. Like he wouldn't like rage around the house, but his mood was quiet, snappy and controlling. Mm -hmm. So for many years I would, you know, try to, and here's the thing as an empath, we want to take it from them. We want to fix it. I mean, it's very like, there's a lot of codependency woven into this empath path thing Mm because we want to fix it. We want to help. So we take their energy. So then I would feel stressed because he was stressed, but I've had to learn. And I honestly have learned it from learning how to live in this adult chair. I've had to learn how to stay grounded in Michelle, no matter what's going on around me. And now Mm -hmm. I don't sink when he sinks and he sinks far, far less, of course. But for many years, I I had to learn how to sit and not follow him into that Sunday stress Mm -hmm. and maintain who I was and just watch him, which is part of the adult chair. It's, I became an observer of him and didn't fall in where he was. Yeah. It's just, it's it's practice to separate out and would in my mind say I have to separate from him because this is not my stuff. This is his, and I love him, but this is his stuff. And I don't. Me following him there does not fix him. Does not help him. I need to maintain me. Well, and and to that and to that same point, I feel like as soon as I come down, I think it, you know, in some part, my children are are magnets for me, right? And as soon and and so I become that sort of boat anchor for the whole house uh, if I'm not really sitting in that adult chair. Yeah, because then instead of being an anchor, you're like a buoy. Yeah, And now you're on top of the water when they're all going yeah. underneath. And it's like, oh, hold on. I'm here. I'm solid. I'm stable. If you want to come to me and be with me, you can. Or, yeah. you know, they get to see two, two different energetic patterns. One right, maybe, right. you know, the anchor one is the buoy. So so let's talk then. I mean, we talked about what it looks like in my house, <laughs> what, what mm-hmm. Pete looks like. But what does it look yeah. like for other people that you work with? Can you describe some of the other symptoms? Yeah, I have a great one, actually. This is like classic empath stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I had had... Um, 
I might have talked about this before, but it's such a great example. I had gone to Starbucks with a friend of mine, and I was on cloud nine. This is years ago. I don't remember what I had done, but I'd written a workshop or something. I was just happy to have my task done. So we went and we met and we had a coffee. It was like an hour. We were there together. It was great, 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 great. And it was time to go. I said, okay. We gave each other a hug and I got in my car to drive home. And it was like somebody hit me with a tranquilizer gun. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm so exhausted. I don't know what happened here, but I am so exhausted. So I drove all the way home and had to take a nap. But I went from being kind of, you know, really high and, and happy to a tranquilizer gun. I went home and I had a puppy at the time and I had to take my puppy out. And I was like, oh my God, if I don't get in bed right now, I'm going to die. I'm so exhausted. And I'm standing in the backyard with this little dog. And then I said, um, you know, this just, I don't, I kept thinking to myself, how can I go from being so high and happy to this really, I wasn't in a terrible mood. I was exhausted and overwhelmed. I just felt like sad, overwhelmed and exhausted. And we had had a great time. So it didn't make any sense to me. So I started stomping. I stomped my feet on the ground and I, and I started brushing myself off as if I had like powder or dust all over my clothes. And I started brushing myself off and stomping around the backyard. I'm like, anything that's not mine, be gone now. And I was just shaking my arms and, and um, stomping. I did it for like 30 seconds. I picked up the dog, went back inside, and my energy was like at 100%. I was fine, not tired in the least bit and happy again. I said, oh my God, that was so cool. I was like, that wasn't my energy. That was not mine. That was and not mine. And you just were able to just shake it off. Yeah. So I called my friend and I said, hey, did you feel tired when we left? Because I don't, you know, I, when we had left Starbucks, I said, I felt so tired. She goes, oh my God, I was exhausted. She said, I had to go home and go right to bed. And I said, well, what was your emotional state when you left? She goes, well, I had a great time with you. But when I was hugging you, I looked around and I realized that this guy that she was kind of dating or wanted to date usually was at that Starbucks and he wasn't there and she didn't see him. And now we were leaving and she wanted to see him. So she got really sad and depressed and thought she'll, she's never going to meet anybody. And she went in this hole, you know, this emotional hole right. as we were hugging. And then we left. And she handed that off to you, right? As you so left. Cool. And yeah. I didn't think to myself, let me go ahead and take her energy. You know, it's yeah. just, and when we're an empath, it happens automatically. We just boop, take it on. And it, we don't even know. And that's an energetic dump. What do we do about it? is to do what I call this Indian stomp. When we go outside and stomp, even inside, I've done this inside. So I use this on a regular basis now. I do this oftentimes at the end of my work day. I do it if my kids are in a bad mood, I'll go outside, I'll stand there, or I can do it inside and just stomp around and I shake my hands and brush my arms and my legs off. And then what do you know? My energy bounces back and I'm the buoy again. You know, I rise up and I feel great. One clear indicator of being an empath, at least it was for me, are um, daily naps or frequent naps needed, like really tired. And I know from about the age of 15 until about 30 years old, like for a long time, I could not function. I'm not kidding, function without a nap every single day. And I never knew why. I thought, yeah. oh, you know, I had mono. It must be I have, you know, I've seen bar in my system. It must be this or it must be that. And I went through all these things. But I just thought, well, I guess I'm just a really tired person. And I still have to go to bed early. I go to bed at nine or 10, but I never nap anymore. And I really believe it's because I learned how to manage this. This is one of the things I learned, you know, what's going on in my energy field. And if I'm taking on everyone else's emotions, that's hard to carry around all day. Think about we're in a backpack and you're piling rocks in it from other people yeah. all day long. It's exhausting. This is really interesting because what you're, I mean, what you're describing is these, these sort of symptoms, like it looks like, you know, exhaustion. I certainly know that personally, you know, particularly when I'm yeah. teaching a lot. If I have a really heavy course schedule, I'm, I feel like I can, I can take it from my students, their stress, and I can carry that around. What, you know, I imagine this can manifest as sort of anxiety or, or depression or, or, you know, what else? Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing that I noticed is um, people that think they have, again, and we think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but with chronic fatigue or fi fibromyalgia, even chronic fatigue, oh, wow. you know, we're just tired all the time. And that, that was one of the things I thought I had, Yeah. <laughs> but wow, you know what, maybe I just, this is just who I am and what I have. And I'm like, no. And fibromyalgia, think about it like this. Fibromyalgia is the physical pain, you know, the aches and the pains and the joints and the muscles hurt as well as being tired. So in our human energy field, which is what we're talking about, this is where all of our emotions and th thoughts exist. They're, it's actually in this field outside of us. So if it's not clean and clear, 
it gets bombarded with other people's energy and it bogs us down. So think about a river that has, it's a beautiful river that's flowing. And then you've got some tree stumps that get added in and then some trees and garbage. And what happens when it gets congested? It gets slow. It gets murky. It's, it gets congested. That's what happens to our energy field. When that happens, physical manifestation occurs. It causes achy joints, Mm -hmm. muscle pain, all of these kinds of things. So when we clear the energy field, guess what? The symptoms oftentimes go away if it's because there's an empath issue going on. I shouldn't say that. There's not an issue being an empath, but yeah. <laughs> if, we're, if, we're, if we are, if we are, it was for me. I mean, I really couldn't function. I'd, I'd work every day and I'd have to take a nap. Yeah. I'd, well, I'd close it, my door in my office, lock yeah. it in set the timer for an hour and sleep. And I couldn't function unless I did. You know, we'll talk a little bit more about what you, uh, about your recommendations for helping to un- unclog those things. You know, what do you do to really uh, help you stay cleansed? But I, I think it's really important to your point specifically, um, being an empath is not an issue. Being an empath can be really great, right? I, I mean, it, it can actually be really positive and wonderful. And I'd, I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on, on sort of the positive side of a, a strong trait of empathy. We are problem solvers. We're seekers. We want to solve problems to issues, um, that kind of thing. We are therapists or we're in some sort of helping field. So Mm -hmm. in my job, it works very well because I know what's going on with a client that's right in front of me and with my kids. And, you know, it's just like I know what they're thinking. I know what they're feeling. So it's helpful from that perspective perspective. But um, I really want to talk about quickly. So what do we do? Like, what do we do if this could be us? And again, if it's, if you're someone that has like chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia or anxiety, depression, this could be what's going on. So regardless of if you think you're an empath or not, I find it really, really, really important. This is not a woo woo thing. You know, some people come in and they go, is this woo? -woo?" No, Everybody has a human energy field. We just do. You can look at it online. There are pictures of it. It exists about two feet outside of us. We all have this. We have to learn about what this is and how to protect it. One thing that I did with my kids every single day, which was so fun when I drive them to school, we talk about bubbling ourselves off. Because think about these kids that are thrown into classrooms all day long. They're with other kids. They are being bombarded. They are being bombarded by other kids' emotions, and they're drip, drifting into the kids' energy fields, and then the kids come home with it. So one thing that we used to do driving to school was to say, I'm going to bubble myself off. I'm going to put a green bubble about, around me. You know, what do you want to do? And I'd ask my two kids, you know, what color is your bubble? And they'd put a bubble. I'd say, okay, let's ask these bubbles to protect us all day long today. Okay, great. So quick and easy. Anybody can do that, Right. Imagine a bubble around yourself. Oh, totally. I'm in it right now. One thing that is an indicator for me that I actually use with, not just with clients, but with anybody is if I'm well rested and I'm not tired and I start yawning and I'm with you or not with you, but with a person that's in front of me or nearby, I know that someone is doing something to my energy field. It's just an indicator for me. So I know in that moment and it's magic. It's it's so fast. I'll be with a client and I'll sometimes even tilt forward because I can feel their they're doing so either sucking on my energy field or putting something in my energy field. And I'll just say, <laughs> nope. And I'll, but I can just, as they're talking to me, I just quickly imagine a bubble. I'll say, nope, this is my energy, you know, and they don't, nobody knows that they're doing that. So I don't get mad, but, um, boom, I stop yawning immediately. Like it's, it's within a minute done. So I'll start drifting and getting tired when someone's draining me and then boom, it comes back. So, but that's, this happens not just with clients, but with anybody, I'm sure people have family members or friends that do the same thing. So when you're with those people, make sure that you're bubbling yourself off. Eating healthy, you know, eating healthier and drinking lots of water because we're such electrical beings, we need water. We need a lot of water. So drinking a lot of water, eating more live fruits and vegetables and foods is really helpful. And knowing that drugs and alcohol hold that energy field and make it sluggish again, it's like putting a tree stump in there or garbage in that energy field. Um, This is another key thing. I I don't care if you're an empath or not, but grounding every single day is key. So many of us use this term grounding, like, oh, I've got a ground or I'm kind of spacey today. I guess I'm not grounded. And I'm starting to ask people, do you know what that really means? And 
I'm not kidding me. The majority of the people do not know what grounding means. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't surprise me at all. It's such an easy word to integrate into your vernacular without thinking very deeply about it. Yeah, I mean, we use so many energetic terms, yeah. but we don't exactly know what we're saying. So I show I draw out for people what grounding is. Grounding is yes, you're walking on the earth and you're ground like your feet are on the ground, but that bubble that I'm talking about that comes about 2 feet outside of us is that where it should be, which is exactly two feet outside of you. And so when you're standing on the ground, it needs to be going into that part of us needs to be going into the ground. When oftentimes when we feel spacey, that bubble of energy rises up and it's above our head or uh, you know, uh, from our knees up or from our ankles up or from our yeah. waist up. So we, when we ground, we're pulling that energy bubble down into the earth where it belongs. Then we feel clear we feel present. Um, we can look at someone that's talking to us and we can actually feel what's going on in our energy fields. We can't do that if we're not grounded. It's like the same analogy of um, the tree without roots and the windstorm mm -hmm. comes, we're going to get knocked over. Like it's right. going to get knocked over, right? That's us. We've got to be really, if we want to be clear and present, we got to be grounded. Get This is another one I say all the time. When someone feels really, really emotional or they're just off, you know, mood swings, things like this, I'll say, go home and get in water. Take a shower, take a bath with two cups of sea salt, not Epsom salt, not kosher salt, but sea salt, two cups, cleans out the whole energy field. If you can't do that, then just take a shower, but get your head wet and everything wet because that also cleans out the energy field. And if you can't get in water and you're someplace where you can't do that, I will do this oftentimes in between clients. I imagine standing underneath a waterfall. So that waterfall is coming right down through me and over me. That clears us too. Do these all make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'm imagining you in a waterfall doing the uh, the the haka, you know, the the sort of the rugby stomp that the that the yes. those teams do that the, that are so great. Like, yeah, the, I, <laughs> yes, it's so yeah. fun. Like I can like you know, you're sort of scaring off the <laughs> the, the energy that is that is sucking on your bubble, right? <laughs> Right. It's, it's just so washing it through. Yeah. We just imagine the white, I just imagine like a white waterfall or water coming yeah. I mean, right down over me. And that helps. I'm, I don't, do you know what a salt lamp is? Yes. Oh, Have you yes. Seen those salt lamps? Absolutely. Those They're are so wonderful. Great. Yeah. They give off negative ions. So they clear our space. Energetically speaking, they also, I mean, they do a million great things. Everyone should have, it's like standing in a waterfall when you have a salt lamp on. I have them in all my rooms. I leave it on in my office, 247. I never turn it off. It kills virus bacteria, but it cl cleans out the energy field again. And again, people know this probably, but to burn sage or a smudge stick, same thing in mm -hmm. the room and around your energy field, that clears the energy field. Um, spending time in nature, just walking around in nature is fantastic for, for our field. It just clears it and again, grounds us. Mm -hmm. Crystals are great. I do this. I say this to not only adults, but for a lot of kids, I have a lot of parents coming in and they don't understand what's going on with their kids and why they're so emotional again. And, and a lot of these kids, like they're just picking up thing, picking up energetically, like different emotions from other people. Carrying around crystals like a black tourmaline or black ob ob obsidian is wonderful for keeping that energy out of our field. We only want ours to be in our field. So if there's someone else's stuff that's trying to come in, if we have these crystals in our energy field, it blocks it from coming in. So they, I remember I gave my son um, this really cool, like look, other necklace and it had a little crystal on it. So it didn't look like, you know, cause he's a boy. So it wasn't yeah. like, Oh, why do you have a neck? There's a cool leather band that he wore around his neck with a crystal. Cause he picked up on a lot of kids stuff. This is what prompted me to even talk about this. Cause I've had so many parents come in and go, what's wrong with my child. And then fill in the blank. You know, my child seems emotional. My child seems quiet. I, my child is ultra sensitive to things or they like to be isolated or, you know, all of these things. And, and, and oftentimes I'll say, kind of sounds like they might be an empath. Do they like, you know, crystals? Do they, you know, do they like these different things? Oh yeah, they do. And they seem to know what's going on with me. That's key too, is when a kid comes up to you and says, you know, Hey mom or dad or whomever, you know, you seem really sad. Are you okay? And then we go, Oh no, I'm fine. It's like a mixed message for the kid. The kid's like, well, wait a minute. I'm intuitively feeling you're not fine, but so why are you telling me that you're fine? It, right. it confuses. So it's okay to say, you know what? I'm really sad, but it's okay. Like, it's okay to be sad, but I am sad. Thank you. Yes. Mommy or daddy or my aunt, you know, whoever you are to this kid, I'm going to be okay. 
I love the idea. I think you've, you've already mentioned about the, the bubble. I think that is the most interesting thing for me related to kids, like reminding them that this is a thing that happens. Like it's not, it, it doesn't have to be written off as a mysterious hormonal thing, right? It, 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 you oh. can actually say like, be aware. I'm going to, I want to teach you to be aware of the people that you're with. And, and as long as you are naturally sort of empathetic, like learn, learn how it works for you, learn how it impacts you, be aware of your reaction to the people in the space around you especially as you say when you're you know shoehorned into these boxes with other people all day long i mean you can get so fun and and, um creative with the kids i remember my kids would come home and i'd say shake it off and they would do this little cute dance and they'd shake 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 when they were little i go let's get all that energy off from school and we dance outside and we dance inside shake 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 shake, and they would laugh and giggle but they would come in in a good mood (laughs) yeah of course that's what i'm going right you gotta it's like you gotta wipe your feet of the mud off on the mat and you've got to shake off the goo that's in in your field yes before you come in the house exactly yes i love it Super yeah. useful. So there, there you have it. That's, I love it. This is good stuff, Michelle. We just want to learn how to manage it. We don't want to turn this off because you can't turn it off, but we do want to learn how to manage it. And, you know, I feel great now. I don't sleep anymore. You know, I don't need naps and I'm not all this, these emotions all over the place. It's like when I learned how to take care of this and what it was, it's like, oh, everything starts to turn around. Great opportunity to learn more about how you relate to the world around you and what you take on. I think this is a wonderful conversation, as always, everybody. Uh, Don't forget to find us. You can find us on Twitter or Facebook, uh, and we'd love to hear from you. On behalf of Michelle Chalfon, I'm Pete Wright. Don't forget to sign up for the mailing list, the all-new Gearing Up for 2017 (laughs) fantastic mailing list uh, at michellechalfon.com. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch you next week right here in the adult chair.